Hey everybody, this is Simon Sage from Mobile Nations. We are at CES Live 2014 uh, with Adam from Occipital. How's it going? Great, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Uh, you guys are working on, as we can see, a pretty cool looking 3D sensor here connected to an iPad. What's, uh, what, what's going on in the, on the software side here? So what you're seeing right now is we've got this uh, box which lets us set the uh, volume of, um, of what we want to scan. And uh, you can almost think of this uh, plane as the build surface of a 3D printer. Uh, where we want to sort of set the object in that box and begin to scan. So what I can show you here is uh, a demo app. This is uh, simply to sort of show the possibilities um, as a starting point for developers who want to create their own apps on the Structure SDK. Um, and what I'll do is I'll scan this bust of Julius Caesar and demonstrate just sort of how rapidly and accurately we can uh, do a scan with the uh, Structure Sensor. We actually missed a little bit of Caesar's nose. <laughs> um, so uh, here you can see we've got a pretty accurate uh, color model of Caesar here, including the actual geometry. So this is represented in the same sort of uh, way that you would uh, have any other sort of uh, 3D object in a uh, virtual world or video game. So this can be sent into the game, or you can send it strike, uh, straight to a 3D printer. We also have a in this demo app, a Shapeways button where we could actually send it to a printing service and have them uh, print it out and send it to us. That's amazing. So what, what kind of uh, use cases do you see for this kind of software? Uh, well, it's, uh, right now there's, there's a few obvious ones that we uh, know about. You know, cur currently uh, there's a lot of interest in 3D scanning for 3D printing. Um, oh yeah, and we see we've we filled in uh, Caesar's nose there <laughs> with the water type function. Um, so obviously a lot of interest in 3D scanning for 3D printing, but what we're particularly interested in are some other use cases. So um, augmented reality is where this all began, and uh, in the past I think what we saw was that technologies that were focused on augmented reality didn't really provide a convincing uh, representation of virtual objects in the real world, and that was largely because they uh, those technologies didn't understand the geometry of the world around them. And so we have a structured light sensor like this, for instance. We're able to actually capture that exact geometry and project virtual objects into the real world uh, in a really convincing manner. And so what that means is that augmented reality games are going to finally operate like we always hope them to operate. And we can even go to uh, different levels where we're able to capture um, entire rooms like this um, you can import them into an Oculus Rift, for instance, and play first-person shooter games in your, you know, cousins from in your cousin's apartment halfway around the world, <laughs> and uh, experience something like that, or even uh, save things for historical preservation. If we wanted to remember our CES suite ten years from now, <laughs> we could capture it and have that. Sure. Um, so those are a couple of things. But I think the other thing we think about with adding a new sense to a mobile device is the fact that whenever this happens, we really don't know what people are going to do. We often are surprised by what emerges when developers have access to a new sensory input on a mobile device. So I think what we'll probably see over the next five years as this hopefully becomes ubiquitous is just a lot of amazing stuff that uh, expands what we're able to do with mobile devices, with wearables, with anything that um, can benefit from having depth. For sure. What, what, what can you tell us uh, about the, the hardware there? I mean, uh, what's, uh, what, what, what's going on on that side? Sure. So what we have here is what's called a structured light system. So we have an uh, infrared laser emitter that goes through what's called a diffraction grating to split that beam into a speckle pattern. And the speckle pattern is projected onto what's around it. And then this matched infrared camera records the shift in that pattern to understand depth. And so whereas a RGB camera typically records a color value for each pixel. This records a depth value. And by aggregating that all together, we can understand the specific structure of objects uh, that's uh, captured by the structure sensor. Um, what's interesting is that we actually match that to the color camera on the iPad. We register it exactly so that we have that combination of both depth and color to get that uh, sort of like we uh, showed here the combination of depth and color of the objects that are captured.
Cool. So um, I, I, I've seen at CES here uh, a lot of motion sensing companies. They're, they're, they're trying to build directly into devices, but it seems like you guys are, are ready to go as, as a, an iPad accessory. Uh, how's that path worked out for you guys so far? Uh, I think so far it's worked out well, and, and I'd say actually also that um, we're not adverse to the idea that this becomes embedded in devices in the future. Um, really what we're most interested in is developing the SDK that people can use to create the apps that will run on uh, devices when this is ubiquitous. And so, but so far, uh, we thought it was an important step to have a device like this out there so that uh, we could jumpstart that uh, move into uh, a future when depth is ubiquitous uh, on uh, mobile devices. Cool. So uh, what can you tell us about uh, pricing and availability for uh, this, uh, this sensor? Sure. So we have it for pre avail available for uh, pre-order right now at structure.io. Um, for $349 to $379, depending on what accessories you purchase it with. And those will be uh, delivered around the uh, April or May 2014 timeframe, so not too far off into the future. Very nice. Well, thanks a lot, thanks a lot Adam, and uh, have a good CES. You too. Thank you.